Hi, and welcome back to the Agile channel. And I am going to show you how to bond your team and set the environment in these uh, online times using Zoom or any other online meeting uh, tool you might have. Uh, so there are Agile principles. Um, the sixth principle is particularly important because of course for face-to-face -face meetings as my friend Zach will tell you. Hey everybody, Zach Galligan here. So, Agile team. You should remember the most efficient and effective method of conveying information is a face-to-face -face conversation. That's, of course, if you want to avoid any gremlins. So when you're first meeting in any meeting with your team, your external team, uh, any meetings where you're having external stakeholders drop in, you oftentimes have to have a little round table to say what your role is, what your name is, introduce everybody. It can be very super dry. Everyone switches off and goes, who is he? You don't really care. I'll listen out for the person I might need to interact with. One way of uh, breaking that paradigm entirely is to just add a third question in. So what's your name? Uh, what's your role or your skills uh, is the second question uh, that people usually say. And then the third, um, just something else. I mean, you can come up with whatever that else is. I generally, in the last few uh, online sessions I've, I've had to bond people, have asked, um, what's your favorite thing that happened to you this week? And uh, it's your responsibility as an agile coach to sort of set the tone and get the flavor going. So I'll often start and um, I'll say something quite personal, uh, either around friends or family, because really what we're looking for here is to really uh, tap into the 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 emotional connection for everybody within the team. Uh, that's how you know how humans are going to bond the strongest. And uh, by asking, uh, setting the tone in a sort of more intimate way, uh, rather than just saying, oh, what is your favorite um, I don't know, inanimate object? Uh, Send it in with uh, interactions around friend or family. Uh, it can lead, lead to, you know, uh, stronger bonds. Uh, I've often found myself almost choked up listening to replies. Uh, so that's the best way to do it, and here is it happening here. The best thing that's happened this week is um, I've got an 18 year old and he started up a mobile phone trading company and to, this week he got his first sale. So he made like a bunch of money just selling a, a mobile phone, <laughs> so I was quite impressed and uh, just really pleased to see him sort of like getting going with life uh, after A-levels. Yes. So yeah, my name is Louis. I'm a graphic designer. And uh, great news that I had this this week is I am going to do a logo for someone in the US. Good, good. Bit of moonlighting on top of your existing role. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ryan? Hiya, I'm Ryan. Um, I'm the product owner of our energy saving software program. And I come from a sales and marketing background. Been doing it for a few years now, and it's just something I excel at. <laughs> um, I guess one thing that's happened to me this week would be oh, I got a free coffee at work. Free coffee, yeah, that's right. I was able to build up enough of my points. You know, they have like a loyalty scheme at a few of the coffee places and I was able to get myself a free coffee. So a bit boring, but that was the highlight of my week so far. <laughs> what, what did you go for? Uh, black coffee, Americano. Black Americano. Okay, great. Highlight of your week. Good to hear it. Rowan? Uh, you're on mute, Rowan. Let me try to unmute you. We can't hear you at all. I can't hear you. Thank you right, so saved by the right. tech team. <laughs> I've been using Zoom for ages and it's, your, I've found uh, all the problems. <laughs> and what's your role, Stuart? You're definitely in the technical team. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, why, <laughs> that's why I'm a project manager and not, not in the techie side, that's for sure. So, yeah, Rowan, so I've been, i worked in the utilities space for quite a long time now, um, but I manage the overall projects. Uh, something interesting happening. Well, I'm hoping it's going to be on Saturday. I'm going to be taking part in my first triathlon. Ooh. So I've been doing a lot of training this week. Mm -hmm. 
And that's a, that's a normal triathlon, biking, swimming, running. Swim, bike, run, in that order. I'm dreading the first two. Yeah. Okay, when I get to the run. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't give you any tips. <laughs> <laughs> developing and um, something great that happened to me this week is um i'm I, i'm a competitive swimmer on the side and we got int- uh, announced that the international swim league was still going to go ahead this year so i still get to see all the professional swim teams for example this one london roar that i support um it's going to go ahead and uh, the first one's in budapest in october so looking forward to that so i need some help from you stuart <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And as you can see, Stuart and Rowan are, are bonding that uh, over, you know, sport and swimming. So uh, Rowan is a fairly technical project manager, but you could see um, this is like the most uh, happy she seemed to be in, in the entire duration. You know, she was smiling from the beginning to the end of Stuart's explanation as to what he was doing. Um, and, you know, they will go off and they will... Um, maybe messaging each other around swimming tips or sport or anything like that around fitness. Equally, uh, we had Ryan, uh, who was a bit of a joker uh, around what he was saying. So that's something for the team can all, can all know. But are they tears of like a clown? Is he upset um, about, you know, the current situation or what's going on? Is there something you, is there a can of worms you don't want to open? Or potentially, is there some way you can connect by asking and uh, giving him someone to sort of unload some of his worries off? Uh, maybe that would nip some unsavory behaviors in the bud. So again, just normal uh, people management stuff. Um, and there's other smaller bits and pieces like Alex who went out with her dog. It's a bit of a throwaway comment to an extent, but you know, you know, those those type of things, people love to bond over. Oh, she's a dog person. Oh, what kind of breed? Oh, have you got any pictures? Oh, that's so cute. Um, so, you know, these are all these things that would have established in the, you know, five or ten minutes just by asking that one extra question that if we didn't ask in those uh, warm ups and intros, the team, you know, may never, ever find out. And I've, I've had people that have worked together for years and then they turn around and say, oh, I didn't know you played uh, guitar. Um, and that came out just in one of my intro sessions. And then they were bonding over that, uh, in addition to the years of programming they've done together. So it's, it's an important thing to do. There you go. Instant connection. So hopefully you all know a little bit more about each other straight away. You love the games. So this is uh, the Scribble game. And I found it's just fun. It's basically online Pictionary. Uh, you get to choose and do some settings as the as the initiator or the coach. You just fire out the little URL, and then everyone can jump in, join in. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can be uh, a bit wacky and crazy. Uh, it's a bit of expression um, coming through in the drawings and the diagrams, and you can even set like a uh, a pre-selected list of words. So maybe if you want to lead it down one particular path. Uh, I, would, I do find constraining people to a set number of things uh, uh, can lead to even more creativity. So that's something to think about. But it's just in general, it's just a, a warm-up game and uh, something you can do easily online. So try it with your team. Let me know how it's uh, getting on. Let's move on to our first game. Uh, we will or do as I'll send you a link in the chat. Uh, so it's a game called Scribble. And I, what I need to do is set up the scribble game first. So I'll create a private room. And we'll do uh, two rounds of uh, 60 seconds in English, no custom words. I think I'm sheep. Cherry blossom. <laughs> You've got five of you. Yeah, that's good. Let's start. Oh. Okay. So Cherry Blossom gets to choose a word. And then you've got to type in your guess as quickly as you can. And you have as many guesses as you want.
Fuck. Yes. <laughs> Upside down tree. Nice it was one. a guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, of course. They <laughs> came Michelangelo, I guess not. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Who is all, by the way? Me. Okay. Uh, I try. There's some letters appear at the top, by the way. <laughs> Shape. Yeah, oh. I just wanted to. Oh. Like <laughs> That's nice you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, storks carry babies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did ah, it? Mm. it was like straight in there, but it was like slightly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard for me as well because I'm French, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we noticed. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll play French time. next time. Round oh, yeah. two. No words, that's cheating. <laughs> oh. We know the strict rules. This is another good reason to play these abstracted games. You find out who's prepared to cheat, who's prepared to bend the rules. <laughs> yeah. Cheat, such a strong Who you can rely on to get you out bend of the Bend the rules, more like. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just got it and yeah. then couldn't remember the first name. Oh, I'm lost. Well, that was uh, Scribble, so hopefully now know, uh, we know who can draw, who can't draw. Uh, a few other new revelations about your new teammates were had there. Okay, uh, moving on. What we're going to do, and uh, I'm a bit worried about doing this, having seen your drawing skills, but uh, we're now going to have an, a five-minute avatar game. So an avatar game is it's very simple. Uh, again, it leads to a bit of creativity, a bit of fun, uh, a shared aspect, some learnings about uh, the individuals in your team. Uh, the other thing that's useful as an output, uh, you can use, uh, if you give a bit of direction about, you know, maybe color it in nice and strongly, you can then use these avatars as uh, Jira avatars, Confluence, Trello avatars, whatever digital board you're using, or even backgrounds uh, on the Zoom. Uh, zoom backgrounds. So yeah, a number of ways to then use an avatar. Again, I find restricting um, how they create the avatar important. You know, set a level playing field. So by giving them that online URL to that uh, drawing on online paint app, that made people all have this sort of uh, same opportunity. And then it also constrained their ability to do anything particularly uh, off tangent or crazy, or um, but what it does do is it spawns that internal creativity. Uh, and all these drawing exercises or anything around drawing, singing, anything more childlike, it tends to uh, break out of a normal uh, office paradigm, office situation. And you know, 21st century is all about creative teams. So you're instantly asking every single member of your team, whether they're just a finance person that usually uses Excel, you know, 47 hours a week, you know, for them to create a picture, they may not have drawn for five, 10, 30 years, you never know. But just doing that, it will just spark uh, something internally. I've had CEOs and uh, financial directors draw amazing little diagrams that they really feel express themselves and their personas. And again, they haven't drawn for ages and they're, they're coming up to me afterwards, excuse me, saying, oh, Miles, this drawing's really bad, but you, what I'm trying to get point is that I'm a, I'm a tiger and I can do this. Uh, yeah, I get it. Um, good stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, avatars are uh, a lovely little game to play with your teams. So what I'm going to do, um, everyone's going to have to use this, even if you've got paint on your actual machine, to make it even. Oh, nice. I'm going to give you five minutes. And what we're going to do is draw an avatar of yourself. Um, so try and make the picture quite big because we're then going to use it as the background canvas. Um, so 
just a portrait or it could be anything it can be an abstraction of what you think you are uh, your favorite thing your favorite quality about yourself or just a literal picture of you as close as you can portrait uh, it in that uh, js paint app okay, okay. So i'm going to give you five minutes music starts now uh, i'm going to try one as well If you do have any bonus time at the end, maybe write your name on it so people know who you are in future. That's what I was doing, actually. <laughs> okay, and then you've got another few seconds. Um, once you've done that, you can click on the file save as and save it as a PNG onto your machine. How do you, what do you say to save it as? Uh, you can save it as uh, PNG or something. Okay. okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to put them up as our background. So if we all know how to do that. Um, oh. so video, it's video settings, isn't it? And then backgrounds yeah. and filters. And then there's a plus <laughs> sign once you're on backgrounds and filters to add an image. <laughs> I need to rotate it. Oh, wow. Hey, that's actually good. <laughs> Look at those muscles, Ryan. Yeah, I'll definitely. Uh, I'll show you on camera, but. <laughs> yeah. That's backwards. How do you get it to? You'll have to budge out the way. Well, it's backwards, but. <laughs> Great. There you go. FT like. Like. Fit like. That's, that's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a greeting up here. <laughs> Yeah, maybe a, a, a bit of direction tweak for the next game is we'll, we'll get people to put it to the one side or maybe draw their two favourite people. <laughs> let's get either side of them. Okay, that's good effort. So we'll leave those up for the rest of the um, the games. This our uh, Would I Lie to You game. Uh, it uses a good feature of Zoom, which is the breakout rooms. Um, and it can also just jump people into really focusing on faces and features and tone and what people are saying so it re really makes people pay attention because they're trying to detect the the lie the discrepancy uh so that's fantastic engagement um it's just it's not a, like a boring game again uh or a boring meeting you you're you're actively making really people connect and bond uh via this medium of this game um, you can also score it differently and you maybe can get a little scoreboard going around all of these games in a row uh, that adds some little side interest if you like. Or just, just play it as it is. Uh, it's a bit of fun, a bit of amusement, keep it lightweight and um, maybe as an agile coach try and jump into those different breakout rooms which you can do with Zoom and then make sure the, the tone and the content isn't a bit too risque. Um, you don't want people oversharing potentially and embarrassing themselves in the long run. Uh, so yeah, uh, good game to play. What I like to you, uh, check it out. Have a go with your teams. Let me know how it goes. Uh, would I lie to you? So I'm going to break you into two separate rooms for a while. And then what you need to do, I'm going to give you only two minutes in those breakout rooms. So Alex, Rowan and Stuart are on one team. So you can come with a team name if you want as well. And Louis and Ryan, you're on the other team. So you, you come up, come up. Have you seen the game show? I might be getting slightly wrong for the game show, but you basically, you come up with something like a crazy story and then you each give a version of it and then we've got to decide who's telling the truth. Okay. All right. Okay, that's how we're going to play it. All right, so I'm going to open the runes and I think you're going to get thrown into them. And it's just me left on my own. I'm going to join room two. What? Hey, Chaps. Okay. I have one, I think. You got one? Yeah. What is it? It's a uh, kind of embarrassing but yeah. like uh, uh there was a time when i was with one of the one of the a girl that i wanted to date mm -hmm. uh, i was in you know the witchmond park in london yeah and it was very cold and i was 
I ate like a lot of grapes just before meeting her. Yeah. And in in the in the in the middle of the the conversation with uh, with her, uh, I started to have like a lot of pain in my belly. You know. Yeah. And I thought it was just like normal, but like then it, it went very very high as well. Yeah. And at the point that I had to actually poop, but like yeah. as quick as possible, and I had to go uh, just behind a tree and uh, yeah. to just do whatever I had to do with it. Okay, uh, fine. Then so I number never, one is I yeah. had to uh, break a date short in a park to have a poop. Uh, yeah. What do you think? I want to hear about poop one. <laughs> yeah. <come> on. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. It's um. It's actually my my true, uh, implausibly true, implausible but true stories. Um, yeah, I was on a, a date with a girl in Birmingham and um, I just started trying to bodybuild the day before. So I went and bought a load of whey protein. And oh. I didn't really read the instructions <laughs> and I took too much. And then I was on a date with her in a park in the evening and then, like, there's a rumble in my tummy, and then the rumble got worse and worse, and then it started getting quite painful. And then I thought, oh, I'll just roll over and do a quick, sly, maybe fart. And then it wasn't. It was an absolute catastrophe, and I had to run away with my pants leaking behind me. Yeah. <laughs> That's the end of the day. <laughs> um. Guess that day did not go well. <laughs> oh, was no. there a second date, or...? <laughs> Uh, no questions please <laughs> <laughs> okay so um now we're gonna have ryan uh tell his true version of that story of my story or <laughs> Thank you, ryan. Just... You're, you're fluffing it a bit there <laughs> no, they've chosen they want to hear three versions of the poo one story yeah i know i'm I was just clarifying okay okay so this one day I was out with my girlfriend at the time and as we were out, I didn't realise what I was, we, the, there were samples at this shop we were in. I didn't realise of the ingredients. So I'm munching away, I have a few samples, we leave, we do our thing to eventually I feel a pain in my stomach. Bad thing. It's okay. It's not too bad. It's all right. So at some point, the pain was just unbearable, and I had to go. I had to go do my thing, but I could not find the nearest toilet anywhere. So I just ran without telling my girlfriend at the time. I just ran away. Just said, "Oh, there's a, a there's a thing." Oh, wait. so I've just gone. And I'm getting missed calls, missed calls. It was maybe 10, it was a 10 minute adventure for me. Um, eventually, back to her and well, she was just horrified and it was not very pleasant. Okay, we'll uh, wrap that there a bit. And then uh, Louis G. So the actual uh, situation is, I'm allergic to, you know, to grapes. And just before meeting the girl, she wasn't my girlfriend at that time, and she's still not, actually. Um, I ate, a, you know, like a kind of yogurt with grape that I didn't know just before. And then it turned out, as I am allergic, I my body uh, goes very quick into digesting. So I was meeting the, that girl for the first time in the park, and then... A lot of stuff happened <laughs> and I had to find a way to to just like leave her without telling her like the truth actually so I run away like this and I hide hide uh, hidden in the in a, next to you know a, a, how do you say a tree and I had to do my business without anything like without any, any toilet paper and stuff and then when <laughs> I came back she was gone <laughs> this is the truth okay all right, over to you, Team One. Who is, is uh, telling the truth there? I'm going to go with version three. I'm tempted to say three. I'm with you there, Alex. 
<laughs> what do you think, Stuart? Uh, yeah, I'll go with that too. <laughs> three, three, and three. Three correct answers. <laughs> it was Lily Jew's real oh, story. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happens, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, what a shit time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a shit time. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, we'll flip it over to you then. Team one. Who wants to go? I'll go first if you want. Um, okay, so about 15 years ago now in Disneyland, it was raining a lot. So everyone got taken inside because it was sort of treacherous weather conditions outside so everyone's in this really crowded shop wouldn't be covid friendly anymore everyone's just piled in and then my friend was in a pram because they were a baby at the time and this guy was standing next to them kind of like hood up couldn't really see his face and then he started like waving and sort of doing all those baby faces at the kids and then it turned out when they saw under his hood his parents saw that it was actually michael jackson who was waving at the kids <laughs> Oh well. So that's my unlikely truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Rowan, do you want to go? It's Joe. Yeah, Rowan, you can go first if you want. Okay. Yeah, so I was actually on holiday in, in Disneyland in Florida with my children. And <clears> my <throat> daughter was about two at the time. She was in a buggy. And uh, we were waiting for one of the rides and we saw this whole entourage go past, kind of looked around and all of a sudden who comes towards us, but Michael Jackson, like literally cooing over my daughter. She had, she got blonde curly hair um, and, you know, just making real faces at her really angelic. Um, yeah. We were totally wowed. Mm -hmm. Stuart. Okay, um, so I was quite a while ago, I think I was about seven or eight. Um, it was my first time abroad. Um, we, were in, we were in Florida um, and we'd been to the Universal Orlando first. We'd been like round all the rides and kind of, um, it was a kind of great thing. It was about the second, or I think it was the third, third day. It was about lunchtime and it was kind of like we brilliant weather up until that point and then thunder Thunder clouds, you kept, kept rolling in. We're like, right, well, there's it's far too far to go back to the hotel at this point and just wait it out. So we're like, right, well, we'll just nip into the shop um, at that particular point. Um, and it was like next to like the Jimmy Fallon, um, the Jimmy Fallon exhibit or um, not exhibit, but uh, the, the ride that you could do. Um, and there's a little shop before that. So we're like all in there kind of huddled in. Um, and there's like racks with clothes. They're not like one full aisle they're like crossed over so because I was about like seven or eight I was just kind of like huddled back in one of the corners and then one of my co cousins that were on holiday with um had recently had her second child and uh, had, had her and the pram and was carrying the other one and then uh, same like, it's uh just as we came in and everyone else was flocking in there was kind of like the hooded guy in the, in the corner just kind of um almost like looking at the the books that are beside it um, and there was kind of like these, these guys around him and me kind of looking at them being saying like, see a secret agent sort of thing or what's going on here? Um, and just as he was looking over, it was kind of just kind of stepping forward every so often. I was a bit like, what's this guy doing? And I saw like the faces he was making and he was kind of like doing the whole this. I was a bit like, what, why is he why is he doing this to, to me? And then obviously noticed that the pram was there and was doing it to the baby. And he started making the noises, being like, where it is? My cousin was just kind of like mortified, being like, what is this guy doing? And kind of backed away. And then it didn't occur to me until later to kind of like, kind of look it up um, and saw all the articles that Michael Jackson had been to Universal Orlando. And we're like, oh, that's who the guy was because I hadn't really didn't really know who the guy was very well at that point. So I was a bit. Mm -hmm. Like shocked to see that, and parents wouldn't believe it, but it definitely was. <laughs> okay, not too bad. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm rubbish at this. Louis, Louis, who do you think? Um, I would go with the version number one, actually, 
because the, the version number three is there's so many details mm-hmm. and I don't th- I don't think it's true mm-hmm. I would go with yeah the version number one Ryan version two for me version two <laughs> I'm gonna cover our cover our odds then and go for version three <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna win anyway are we split decision right who was right uh, wow. <laughs> I told you, I knew it. Yeah. Well done. The detail in version three was amazing, though. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was, it was too like amazing. scheming up there. It was like, you can tell this. <laughs> I'm always sold on detail. Because I beat the universal on one until recently, yeah. so I was like, all the details. <laughs> <laughs> well, being that against that, I was thinking, did Jimmy Fallon, was he really got a, a, an Orlando, like, place at the same time as Michael Jackson was alive and famous. And I'm not sure their careers overlap that much. <laughs> I give you the benefit of the doubt. Great. Okay, well I hope you enjoy that. It was good. It was great. Yeah. So this is a game that was actually new to me in this session. Uh, Again, as an agile coach, you may not know everything and it's always use uh, use the hive mind, use everybody. I'll put the question back on them. And you might get good answers. So I said, are there any other games that you, uh, you know, you've tried recently or you think are fun? And actually two of them separately had used this heads up game. You know, it's the twist on the old post-it note game uh, where you stick to your forehead and you've got to guess what it is from other people's questions. It's a bit more fast paced. So you're flipping your phone and every time you flip it, it gives a new um, uh idea that the, the people have to express to you and yet you have to guess it. You obviously can't read what's on, on the front of your phone there. Um, there's a slight technical issue sometimes, like um, it's a little bit illegible depending on the lighting and the intensity of the screen um, brightness. So you might want to just have a little test uh, of that at the beginning. But it's a great game and uh, gets everything going. It's a bit US focused, so we tried the accents game. And it was all U.S. accents, like Californian accent, New Jersey accent. And if you've got teams in India or Europe, they might not have a clue. Um, so we have to dig around within the app. There might be other apps similar. But yeah, heads up app. Uh, highly recommend it. A bit of fun just to warm a team up. Go for it. Um, if you had any other games you'd ever done online or any other sort of team building games that you could think of, we could run in this session. Do you play heads up? What's what's heads up again? Sorry, you know it's it's like uh, you're gonna have to use your phone, and mm-hmm. uh, there's like a word. Oh, or the thing where you, have to you guess. go like this, and then yeah. you like the, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Do like this, and you uh, you can do the like the three dots at the top right selfies. of your video, and yeah. then hide selfie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah. And then it works perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I can see okay. it. Um, like. <laughs> it, it's uh, they like yeah they, they like um they will fly about over the top of bodies of water um they're, they're quite long uh uh they sound like an animal that's mythical and breathes fire yeah oh like yeah. dragon yeah um, an yes. yeah, yeah yeah so dragonfly we'll give you that <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> generous. <laughs> what eight is it? Yeah. Oh, did you get a minute to see how many you could do? Oh, you got like um, eight. Oh, really? I didn't see it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, eight, eight tentacles. Eight tentacles. Uh, it's in the sea. Octopus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That's <laughs> really long. Oh, that was fast, man. Okay. Uh, it's up. It's up. It goes so fast. <laughs> Betty one. Crocker, Samsung. Uh, okay, Stuart's okay. going. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Egypt. Egypt. It's, it's big from by the uh, tri- uh, triangle. It's Egypt. You know, 3D. Uh, oh, a pyramid. Yeah. yeah. What you do to make uh, an omelet? An omelet. You can't, you can't make an omelette without doing this. Frying? The first thing you do... <laughs> oh, the break the eggs. <laughs> yeah, that'll um, do. Another name uh, for breaking. Um, 
A it's long sprint. Miles. Miles. Twenty-six Very long miles. Job. Oh, what, what, what uh, marathon? What? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what happens when you dial the wrong number? <laughs> <laughs> you just gave it away. The wrong number. <laughs> I gave it away. Next. <laughs> yeah. So that's the Zoom games. I hope you found it useful, and um, I do hope you enjoy your coaching. Uh, enjoyed these uh, online formats. Uh, we don't know how uh, frequent they're going to have to be. Whether we'll be getting back to more face-to-face -face games in future. And I will also have a think, or let me know in the comments about how to convert any existing Agile and Lean games into an online format. Uh, it'll be great to hear, and I'll do another video about that soon. Have a great day. Goodbye.